Hello. I keep on getting asked lately uh, how I cut people out of the background. And uh, what I do is I use uh, After Effects to rotoscope them out. So this will be a super basic uh, tutorial or workflow of mine. Uh, I would suggest if you're really interested in this, look up a uh, rotoscoping After Effects tutorial on YouTube and you'll probably find uh, way better people than me. All right, so here's a little clip I grabbed off uh, YouTube. Uh, it could be anything, obviously, but this is another RLM thing I'm doing. So uh, here it is. Not at all, Jay. It's truly an amazing film. And here's what it looks like afterwards. Not at all, Jay. It's truly an amazing film. All right, I was pretty loose with this because I don't need to be that precise because it's absinthe. It's not going to care if you shut off, shave off a corner or if you add a little bit of white to the side because it's just, it's still tracking, you know, the details. This just kind of reins it in a little bit. And now that I have them punched out, I can put whatever elements I want in the background or, a, you know, a new background, some animated thing. But yeah. All right, so you open up your footage in After Effects. And then you go to Layer, New, Solid. And uh, it doesn't matter what color it is. And now I can't see anything. But that doesn't matter. Just turn off the visibility. You don't need it. It'll still let you see the uh, roto shapes as you're doing them. So uh, it doesn't matter. Now this is just my workflow. I mean, uh, I like to put all my shapes on the layer above. This way I could turn the uh, mask on or off, you know, to check, see how I'm, I'm doing. As opposed to if you had them all on the actual video layer, you'd have to individually select each one and say, uh, turn on, turn on, turn on, turn off, turn off, turn off. Anyway, notice I have my pen tool selected. It's very similar to Illustrator's uh, pen with the Bezier curves and all that. I keep my first go usually pretty loose. I can always go around and uh, fix it later, but I just I click out the main mass. Now when you're starting out, you're gonna be super tempted to just make one giant rotoscope that follows all the arms, all the hairs, everything. But uh, that's gonna cause you so much uh, more work in the long run. So it's easier to break it up into parts, the arms, the head, the body core. All right, so now we have his torso uh, roughed in pretty good. So now this is how the effect works. Go to the layer that you want masked and change it from no track mat to alpha mat. And it'll utilize this track mat that you're creating. And there we have it, a giant potato. We're done. Okay, no, we're not really done. Insert a montage of me cleaning up a little bit and we're done. Okay, so all we've done so far is make one frame where he's cut out perfectly. This uh, cookie cutter shape is not gonna you know, hold as he moves. So uh, we're gonna have to animate it. Now to have this mask animate, we have to enable that. So you first wanna expand the layer, expand the masks, select the mask you're, you're animating, and then click this little stopwatch next to mask path. That's what enables animation. Now clicking that stopwatch just created our first keyframe. That means the points are gonna look exactly like this at this point in time. Now you see how Mike moves around? We're gonna to have to move our splines along with him. This doesn't mean we have to do a move every single point on every single frame. Much like with uh, Absinthe, it utilizes keyframes and it'll blend between those. So that's what we wanna do. So as I started moving these points on a different frame, it's already created a second keyframe. It's gonna blend from that last keyframe I created to this new one now. Sometimes the color of the masks will blend too much in with the subject or you just want it to pop a little more. So you could just double click on the swatch and change it to any color you want. So now it animates between these two keyframes, but now we gotta go in there and uh, fix it where it slips. Now you don't wanna keyframe every single frame. Much like Absinthe, you wanna get away with uh, as least as you can. So uh, more distance between them is good if you can get away with it. So now I just scrub through the frames and any place that gets drastically different, 
I'll go in there and tweak it and put it back, you know, on course. It might look like a lot of work, but it's it's not that bad. Another keyframing montage. All right, and now the body's done. Now we start the head. Same thing as before. Now all you have to do to create a brand new mask on the same layer is have the layer selected and just start drawing with a pen again. It will create mask number two. Now for this mask, I'm gonna get the head, plus I'm gonna get that little bit of the collar right there. And there we go, a potato with the head. Now the same process with the head. I like to turn my mask on and off every now and then, just to uh, double check, see how I'm doing. Then I'll just scrub along and see how he's doing. In time for his right arm. Make sure all of your parts uh, overlap so there's no uh, little lines. And the last arm. Not at all, Jay. It's truly an amazing film. Not at all, Jay. It's truly an amazing film. And that's how I cut them out. It might seem like it takes a long time, but you get faster. And it actually took me longer to make this tutorial than to clip them out of this video here. So uh, there you go.